Welcome everyone to our webinar today. My name is Stephanie Offord and I'm the Development Manager for the School Sector at Cambridge English Language Assessment. I work closely with our offices all over the world, providing support for our young learners and for schools offering. I'd like to begin by telling you a bit about Cambridge English Language Assessment and our offering for younger learners. Cambridge English Language Assessment is a not-for-profit department of the University of Cambridge and provides the world's leading range of qualifications for learners and teachers of English with around 4.5 million candidates from 130 countries. Our suite of internationally recognised qualifications takes learners step by step through each stage of school and beyond. Our tests begin with Cambridge English starters, movers and flyers, which are aimed at primary and lower secondary age. Following on from these, we have key for schools, preliminary for schools and first for schools for late primary and secondary age learners and Cambridge English advanced to prepare school leavers for university and the workplace. Our highest level exam, Cambridge English Proficiency, is for very high achievers. Today's webinar will look at the first tests in this suite, Cambridge English Young Learners, and it would be great to see how many of you are already familiar with these, so starters, movers or flyers. Could you please select the polling button for any of the three that you have prepared or are currently preparing learners for? Many of you are preparing or have prepared students for all of the Cambridge English Young Learners exams. Please use the polling buttons though. Great. Okay. Good. Many of you are quite familiar already with our Young Learners tests. Before we start today's webinar, I'd just like to inform you of a few new developments that are taking place with our Young Learners tests and support materials between now and next year. The first thing is that we are updating the tests in January with a new look and feel. The content of the tests won't change, but we have attractive new illustrations to keep our younger learners fully engaged. Another exciting development is the launch of our young learners' tests on computer and laptop. In November of this year, we are starting a live pilot stage in a limited number of countries, and will then be rolling out to further markets on a country-by-country -country basis. These tests contain the same enjoyable activities, attractive illustrations and familiar topics as the tests on paper, and use the latest child-friendly technology to fully engage and motivate young learners. These tests also benefit from faster results. To help learners prepare for the tests on computer, we are developing a downloadable sample test, which will also be available as a free app. We have a range of interactive games available for young learners, which are great fun ways to help children improve their English. Monkey Puzzles 2 will be launched very soon and is perfect for children preparing for young learners' tests. Our very popular word list picture books are currently available for Cambridge English starters and will soon be published for movers and flyers too. Other support materials to watch out for are listed here. All of these materials are available on our website www.cambridgeenglish.org slash younglearners so do please check it for all the latest developments. Now, without further ado, I will pass you over to Sarah Proudlove for fun and achievement in the Young Learner Classroom. Thanks, Stephanie. My name's Sarah Proudlove and I am a consultant for Cambridge English Language Assessment. I have a master's degree in teaching English to young learners and have taught young learners in France, Italy and the UK. Outside of my work for Cambridge English Language Assessment, I am Head of English as an Additional Language in a British boarding school in Cheltenham. In our webinar today, we'll start by discussing what we mean by motivation, especially in young learners. Then, we'll look at how reading and writing are tested in the Cambridge English Young Learners tests at each level, 
Cambridge English starters, Cambridge English movers and Cambridge English flyers. Then we'll discuss a range of teaching ideas which you can use at each level of the Cambridge English Young Learners to practice the different skills. Let's start by making sure everyone has the same understanding of what we mean by motivation. Here's one definition of the verb to motivate. As you can see, there are some words missing. How would you complete the definition? Think about it and then type a few words in the chat box to show how you'd complete the phrase. Well, some very good ideas coming up to stimulate imagination, the brain, thinking, curiosity, very good, creativity, great. Some really good suggestions there. Here's how the dictionary completes this definition. So to motivate is to stimulate someone's interest. And many of you did write that in the chat box. Well done. Here's another incomplete definition. Can you complete this one? Type a few words in the chat box to show how you'd complete the phrase. Lots of ideas about desiring to learn, taking an interest, being stimulated. Ooh, wanting to participate, that's a good idea. To get enthusiastic. Or to investigate, I like that idea a lot. Again, many very interesting ideas. Here's how the dictionary completes this definition. So the idea here is that motivation makes people want to do something. If we want to motivate our learners, we need to grab their attention. If learners are not paying attention, then the lesson is a waste of time. However, if they're curious, challenged, amused, entertained and intrigued, then they will be paying attention. This means there's more chance that learning will take place. So, how can we make children feel this way in our lessons? How can we make them feel this way about their language learning? What kinds of activities or topics stimulate children's interest? I'd like you to share your ideas for the kinds of activ activities or topics which young learners find motivating. Type any ideas you have into the chat box. Mm -hmm. Lots of people mentioning games and songs. A lot of people wanting to talk about challenge. Some really useful ideas from you there. Here are some activities I thought of. Lots of these are the same as the ones you came up with. We all know that children love games and songs, as well as stories. They also need to have some physical movement in their learning. Children respond well to pictures and colour and also enjoy working together. They like to have a challenge, such as problem solving, which helps them to focus on the solution to the problem rather than thinking about the language that they are using. As well as appealing activities, we also need to make sure we create the right conditions for learning, where learners are keen to be involved. For example, a positive classroom environment with lots of praise and room to take risks will give learners confidence. Effective classroom activities help to create this positive atmosphere. We want to create enthusiasm and a lifelong love of learning. So, if these are the kinds of activities our learners enjoy, what about the kinds of things they don't enjoy doing? What things have you found less successful in the classroom? Type some ideas into the chat box now. Not so much discussion on this one. Perhaps you find that your children enjoy all of the activities in your lessons. 
Of course, all children are different, and the things that they don't enjoy will vary a lot. Let's have a look at the list of ideas that I came up with. Of course, you may have different ideas. Some children enjoy working alone, but others prefer to be able to talk to their classmates, find answers together, and compare their results. Young children often find grammar difficult to understand, and so prefer to learn language through activities which are more meaningful to them. Listening to others speaking for a long time can become boring for children, as they can find it difficult to follow, especially if they don't have any purpose to their listening. Children may enjoy reading aloud, but others don't always enjoy listening, and so they may switch off. Especially if they can read the text more easily for themselves, it's very important for tasks to be set at the appropriate level. When there is no challenge, children lose interest. When a task is too difficult, children may pretend that they are disinterested, perhaps to cover their fear of failure, or maybe they'll just get bored because they don't know what to do. Of course, all learners are different. And some may like the suggestions above. Let's look now at two different theories about motivation. One way to think about how to keep young learners' motivation is through the idea of multiple intelligences. This is Howard Gardner's theory, which I'm sure some of you will be familiar with. Every child is different. We all think and learn in different ways. Different types of tasks will stimulate and interest different learners. Our role as teachers is to ensure that our lessons include a variety of task types that will keep most learners challenged and engaged most of the time, and so maintain motivation. Here's another theory about motivation by John Atkinson. It's human nature to avoid things that we have failed at. If children feel successful at tasks in English, they're usually happy to do more. If they feel like they are failures, they say things like "I hate English" and try to avoid situations where they may fail again. It's very important, therefore, to have a success-oriented approach to teaching. This means setting tasks that children can achieve. And making them progressively more difficult over time, this creates a feeling of success. Praise is very important, and also always giving lots of support or scaffolding tasks so learners can feel confident and achieve the next step in their learning. If you let your learners collaborate in the classroom, they can support one another and teach each other. It helps to create this success-oriented approach. Cambridge English Young Learners candidates are awarded shields that record their progress in the different parts of the test. No child ever fails a Cambridge English Young Learners test, so everyone can have a sense of achievement. A key feature of these tests is that they are motivating. This gives children a positive start to their language learning journey. Let's move on now to see how reading and writing are tested in the Cambridge English Young Learners tests. We'll look at a few tasks, but there's more detailed information about the tests on the Cambridge English Language Assessment website. We'll give you the address at the end of the session. So, let's start with a task from Cambridge English Starters. This is the first task in the Cambridge English Starters Reading and Writing Test. Remember that Cambridge English Starters is below A1 on the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages, the CEFR. I'm going to give you some questions to answer. Please use the chat box for this. Firstly, can you read the task and decide what skills are being tested in this part? Type your answers into the chat box.
Good, some good ideas here about word association and vocabulary. Identifying. Somebody has pointed out that there are animals involved. That's right. This part of the test focuses on reading and understanding or recognising individual nouns. Children have to match pictures to words. Secondly, what do learners have to do in this part? Type your answers into the chat box. Lots of people pointing out that there's a need to understand and recognise an object. This part requires children to read the word and picture and as many of you have pointed out, put a tick or a cross in the box. The young learners don't have to do any writing at this stage of the test. My third question, how motivating do you find this task? Think about what we've discussed about motivation. Type your answers into the chat box. Lots of you find it very motivating. Perhaps try and think about your reasons for that. Lots of people are commenting on the colourful pictures. And the idea that it's quite easy to understand and there's no writing to do. Somebody commented that they are objects that the children will know. And therefore there's promoting of confidence. We feel that this part should be easy and stress-free. The idea of the pictures is that they are supportive, clear and attractive. There are no trick questions or distractors and therefore the task isn't too challenging at this initial stage of the test. Children should feel able to complete this task successfully before moving on to the next task. So, how could you practice the skills needed for this task with young learners? Here are some ideas for classroom activities that I thought of. The most important point here is that the requirements of the classroom activities are similar to the task in the test. So, learners should be given the word written down, not orally, along with a picture. Flashcards are really useful for this and you can find lots of free flashcards online. Just run a search and see what happens. You could give a set of pictures and words, perhaps some of which are wrong, and ask children to match them. They can work together on this, moving cards into their pairs. You could also use realia for this. You can use the vocabulary lists to decide which words you want to include. Helminism, where the cards are placed face down and children have to turn them over two at a time to find pairs, is always a popular game. Another popular game is bingo. Give children bingo cards with the words on. About six is OK. Then show a picture. If children have the word for this picture, they cross it off. You could also give children pictures and show the words or mix up pictures and words. Another activity that you could use could be to give small groups of learners a picture and a set of words, perhaps on sticky labels or on cards. Children can match the words to the right item on the picture. You can adjust the activity according to the ability of different groups or learners to make sure that there is just the right amount of challenge. 
I expect many of you use these kinds of activities in class. They're fun and motivating and they're also relevant to preparing for the test without being boring or repetitive. OK, here's another task from the Cambridge English Starters Reading and Writing Test. This one is part three. What is the connection between the words in this task? Write your answers into the chat box. That's right, these words are all from the lexical set of clothes, which is one of the topics you can find in the Cambridge English Starters thematic vocabulary list in the Cambridge English Young Learners Handbook. This task, as many of you have pointed out, focuses on spelling. Children are given some pictures and the letters of the words jumbled up. They need to rearrange the letters in the correct order to spell the, the word. This is quite a fun activity. They are anagrams and they present a challenge to children, but they're supported as well. The correct letters are supplied with no distractions, as well as the right number of spaces to complete. The writing needed is very limited. The children can copy the letters if they need to. So, what classroom activities could you do to practice these skills and maintain motivation in the classroom? Here's an idea that you could use. Organise the children into small groups or teams. Give each group a set of letters. You could use coloured magnetic letters or print off and copy alphabet flashcards from the internet or make your own. Choose a range of words from a lexical set. You can see I've chosen clothes. These flashcards are from the picture bank on the teaching support website. There are lots of really useful resources there and we'll give you the address at the end of the webinar. Choose an easy word and tell the children which letters they will need to make the word, in the wrong order of course. This practices their listening skills. Make sure you give the letters mixed up. Once the children have found the right letters, give them a minute to see if they can make a word with them. Then, show the picture flashcard of the word. Ask children to work together to make the word using the letters they've found. You could make this competitive by awarding points to every team who spells the word correctly and perhaps a point to the team who finishes the most quickly. Check the spelling of the word. Focus on any typical or tricky letter combinations such as OU or ER in trousers or OE in shoe. Repeat with the other words you've chosen. You could finish by asking the children to decide what word connects all of the pictures, in this example clothes, and to spell it out to you. So, do you think young learners would find this motivating? It's a game and there's a challenge, but there is also plenty of support and children can help each other. What other activities could you use to practice for this task? Type your ideas in the chat box now. Lots of good ideas coming up. Spelling, dictation, dominoes, hangman, word searches. Blockbuster, that sounds like a very good idea. A simple game of Scrabble. Jumbled letters. People suggesting singing a song using the uh, vocabulary chosen. The teacher spelling the word to the children and then the children saying the word. Odd one out. 
Lots of really great ideas there. Hangman is really useful, as well as word searches, picture crosswords, Pelmanism and matching games. OK, let's move on now to look at a task from the Cambridge English Movers Reading and Writing Test. Here's an example of a Cambridge English Movers Part 2 task. Cambridge English Movers is at A1 on the CEFR. Take a minute to look through the task. Let's think about the same questions that we considered for the Cambridge English Starters task. First of all, which skills are being tested in this part? Type your answers into the chat box. Lots of people with the right answers here and some very good details being given. This part of the test focuses on reading and understanding short sentences which contain key language. As many of you have pointed out, key language such as nouns, numbers, colours, comparatives, prepositions of place and so on. What do learners have to do in this task? Type your answers into the chat box. Lots of good ideas coming up here. Understanding the sentences, absolutely. Assess if they match the picture, good. Say if the statement is true or false, absolutely. Children have to decide if each sentence is true or not and write yes or no after each sentence. Finally, how motivating do you think this task is? Lots of people think it's very motivating. What is it that makes the task motivating? A oh, nice idea about reading the picture. Cheerful, colourful and attractive illustrations. Oh, one participant has pointed out the bear family in the picture and thinks that's motivating. And lots of you think that the picture is fun. Challenging but not beyond their knowledge. I think that's a very good point. Something that, pe that young people can relate to and understand. Yes, absolutely. There's some great ideas here. It's a fun picture which should interest the children. There's lots going on. And as one participant pointed out, the child has to read the picture carefully. It's a challenge to match the, se the sentences with what they see when there's so much detail in the picture. But by keeping the writing output simple, the task is not so demanding as to put children off. So what about the classroom? What kinds of classroom activities would you use to practice the skills children need for this task? Children will need to practice the chunks of language they need for this task, as well as the longer sentences used in the task. You would probably want to build up from shorter, simpler phrases to longer, 
more complex sentences. For example, you may ask children to start by labelling or identifying parts of a picture, practising nouns and noun phrases such as a big brown bear or a white towel. Then you may practice some of the prepositional phrases, for example, below the mirror or in the cupboard. You can also focus on the actions you can see in the picture, washing or cleaning teeth. Practicing comparatives as well will be important, asking children to point to the biggest or the smallest or the wettest bear. You can do all of this through games or races, working in teams or pairs. Children can point or label a picture or use flashcards. There is a set of fantastic classroom posters on the teaching support website that you could use for this. Again, we'll give you the address at the end of the session. Next, you'll want to move on to longer phrases or short sentences. True and false games are always popular or perhaps you could ask children to correct sentences which are wrong. The aim is to make sure that the activities are achievable, but, but that they are challenging enough to keep children motivated. Remember as well that although you may do some of this orally, you must also make sure children have the chance to read and respond to the words, phrases and sentences themselves. Let's look at a task now from Cambridge English Flyers. Here's an example of a Cambridge English Flyers Part 4 task. Remember, Cambridge English Flyers is at A2 on the CEFR. We're going to think about the three key questions again. What skills are being tested? What do children have to do? And how motivating do you think they would find the task? You can type your answers to one or more of these questions in the chat box now. Lots of people pointing out the reading comprehension aspect of this task. People finding it, think it's stimulating and motivating. Summarising the general understanding of a story. Nice, colourful and clear. Interesting that some people have started to think about the grammatical aspect of the task. And a few people pointing out that it is becoming more challenging. Lots of excellent answers there. Let's just go through, through each of the questions. The skills that are being tested are the ability to read and understand the gist of a longer text with gaps. The children here need to understand the functions of different words, for example nouns or adverbs. They need to understand verb tenses as well. Learners have to choose the correct words from the box to fill the gaps in the text. They must write five words and tick a box to show the title, to choose the title that shows their general understanding of the text. If we think about motivation, the story is fun and it should make you smile. There is a picture to support meaning and there are only six parts to the task, so it shouldn't be too overwhelming. It is supposed to be a challenge, note it is part four but it's matched to the age range of the children through its familiar topic. If you want to practice these skills with your young learners, there are many different things that you can do. One of the best ways to prepare 
is to encourage learners to read for pleasure as much as possible. If you have access to guided readers, that's great. There are also lots of resources online that you can use, and course books also often have fun and interesting texts for young learners. To check understanding, use pictures. Children can match pictures to parts of the text or choose the picture that fits the overall meaning of the text. To focus on the skills required for the gaps in the text, start by thinking about meaning. You could provide two or three choices for each gap. It can be easier to choose the right word if there are fewer options. Or, like the silly dialogues, put deliberately wrong words into sen sentences, or repeat a silly word such as sausage. Once the children have got used to thinking about the meaning, you can add a grammatical element, encouraging them to think about which words go together and the patterns that words make, such as enjoy with a verb with ing. You could give small groups of children a short text with gaps, and different words written on cards. They can try different words in the gaps and they will need to work together and support each other. Again, the focus is on making sure the level of support is right for the ability of the learners and introducing plenty of variety and collaborative work. Let's look at another Cambridge English Flyers task, this time part seven. This is another gapped text, but how is it different from the part 4 text that, you've just, that we've just looked at? Type your answers into the chat box. Lots of you have identified that this task is more challenging. In this text, there are no answer options given. The children must choose their own words. The text is shorter, and it's a different type of text. Here it's a letter, not a story, though it could also be a page from a diary. Also, in this task, some of the gaps have a lexical focus and others are more grammatical. OK, so what are the similarities between this task and the part 4 task? How are they the same? Type your ideas into the chat box. Lots of people pointing out that it's still a reading comprehension and is still a gap fill. Some comments about this task being perhaps more motivating because it's a bit more challenging. And lots of people pointing out the pictures. Absolutely, there are pictures here to support this text as well. And once again, the idea is that the topic is quite familiar and appealing to children. Some of the classroom activities we discussed for part four will also be useful for this task, especially reading for pleasure. You'll need to make sure, however, that you target a wider range of words when working with gapped texts. So, that's about it for the presentation today. I hope you found it interesting and useful. We began by talking about motivation, what we mean by motivation, and how we can motivate young learners in the classroom. 
we then looked at some examples of how reading and writing is tested in the Cambridge English Young Learners tests at all three levels and how the tests are designed to be child-friendly and motivating. We then explored some practical classroom ideas on how to make preparation for the tests fun and motivating and to fit in with your everyday classroom practice. I'll now pass you over to Pippa who will talk to you about some support materials for the Cambridge English Young Learners tests then Stephanie, Stephanie and I will come back to answer your questions. Please type any questions you have into the chat box and we'll do our best to answer as many as possible. Over to you, Pippa. Thanks, Sarah. Hello, this is Pippa back again. I'm on audio feed only, so there's no video for a few minutes. I'm going to talk you through some resources to support your teaching before Stephanie and Sarah come back to answer your questions. There are lots of resources available on our New Look Teaching Support website. You can find information here about all Cambridge English language assessment exams and teaching qualifications. You can also find thousands of free resources, including downloadable lesson plans, worksheets, classroom activities, teaching ideas, sample papers, handbooks and more. As a teacher, you can receive up-to-date news about our free support in our monthly newsletter. This has previews of new resources and major live and online events. The newsletter is automatically sent to everyone registered on the Teaching Support website who has ticked the box to receive communications, so make sure you do that if you haven't already. Here are some examples of materials you can find on the Teaching Resources website to use in young learners' classes. In the Resources section, you can download materials for free to use in class, including posters and worksheets, pictures from the picture bank and sample test papers. So take some time to explore these. I'm sure you'll find them really useful. As you're attending this webinar, you're obviously serious about your professional development, so you should check out the Cambridge English Teacher website. Language teachers around the world can come together to connect and develop. It offers resources, courses and connections to help shape individual career paths. You can register as a guest or as a member. Membership grants unlimited access and a whole year costs just £28.50. That's about €34 Euros or $45. You only need to register and pay using a debit or credit card. Membership includes a free 10-hour course of your choice. We also now offer institutional membership, where schools or chains of schools can register their teachers. If your institution registers 20 or more teachers, you can create your own private community within Cambridge English Teacher, which offers lots of additional benefits. Cambridge English Teacher offers how to teach courses for all our popular Cambridge English exams. These take about 10 hours to complete. You can take the course at your own pace as you have up to six months to finish. You'll be awarded a certificate of completion at the end of the course. Here are some courses which may interest you. You can buy these online or choose one for free if you become a member. A new course, Teaching Writing, will be out in October. Another good reason to become a member is that you have access to a huge range of webinars and articles from educational experts. There really is a lot of great content to explore. Some examples that you might be interested in are on the slide. You can find these in the resources section of the site. The web address is at the bottom. As well as these free resources for teachers, Cambridge English Language Assessment and Cambridge University Press have joined together to offer a comprehensive range of printed and online exam preparation and support products and services for teachers and learners for all our exams. Here are two examples, the Story Fun and Fun series. Both of these are available for all the Cambridge English Young Learners tests, starters, movers and flyers. For more information, go to the Cambridge English Young Learners section of the Cambridge University Press website the address is at the bottom of the slide. Practice tests can also really help learners familiarise themselves with the tests. These are authentic examination papers and each set contains three full colour tests, a CD and an answer booklet. Again, you can find out more on the Cambridge University Press website. As a teacher or a learner, you can use all our official preparation materials with confidence. This is because they've been developed by a team of internationally recognised authors and experts in language assessment. They're also the only exam preparation materials for Cambridge English exams that can use the Cambridge Learner Corpus.
The Cambridge Learner Corpus is a unique bank of thousands of candidate scripts from Cambridge English exams, which our authors use to identify typical learner mistakes. We focus on common problem areas and train students to avoid them. If you are interested in any of these materials, please contact your local Cambridge University Press Office or representative, or for more information, go to the ELT section of the Cambridge University Press website. Now I'll pass you back to Stephanie and Sarah, who will answer your questions. Thanks for listening, and goodbye. Thank you, Pippa. And thank you all for the um, questions that have just come in. We'll do our best to answer most of them. We have about five or six minutes left, so uh, we'll try and get through as many as we can. Um, the first question is referring to the Young Learners Tests on Computer, um, and the question was whether or not these will um, have same-day scoring. Um, it won't be same-day scoring because the speaking test, although the children take it on the computer, which is assessed by a real-life examiner, and, and so results generally will take about 10 days to two weeks to be returned to the centre, but it will depend on the test centre, so you'll need to check with your local centre what um, time frame they are working with. The uh, next question that we had um, is for some clarification about what Pelmanism is. Pelmanism has another name, which is Pairs, and it's a game which you can play with your young learners. You need to have a set of picture and word flashcards, which you place um, your young learners' working groups. They place the cards face down onto the table, and then they take it in turns to turn over two cards. The aim of the game is to match the word and the picture, and if they do that, then they get to keep the cards. The, uh, the winner of the game is the person that has the most cards at the end. Sounds like lots of fun. It is. Um, another question, what is the CEFR level for flyers? Um, that is A2 on the CEFR. A very good question that we've, we've had is um, a question here saying, um, asking whether... Uh, some kinesthetic learners, so those learners who enjoy movement, uh, might get frustrated by the Cambridge English Young Learners Tests. Of course, we want the preparation for the, ex for the tests not to dominate all classroom practice activities at all times. However, there are still ways to make the practice activities for the tests kinesthetic. For example, miming and action games to uh, practice the key vocabulary, um, flashcards can be put around the room. So I think that there's a lot of scopes to, de to uh, vary the learning activities and therefore uh, to address all different learning styles of the learners. Thank you, Sarah. We've also had um, another question. Uh, in fact, a couple of people have asked how we can motivate children to read more. Uh, and of course, uh, this is um, always um, a very important question. I think one of the keys is to find topics that relate to young learners, to find topics that they, um, that they are interested in and perhaps to give them choice about which topics or which books to read. If you have a book box with your graded readers in, then allowing the children to actually choose the one that, that they want to read will make them more motivated. Another key is perhaps thinking about the length of the texts that you use. There's no point giving young learners books that are too long, uh, as they might get um, bored by them. So choosing books that are short, um, with good illustrations in, uh, and that are accessible, will be the best way to motivate them. OK, we have another very good question following on from the CEFR level for flyers, which is A2. Yes, it is the same level on the CEFR as um, key for schools. The difference being, um, as you point out, the age uh, of the target student. So um, Cambridge English Flyers is generally targeting a, a slightly younger age than key for schools would be. Um, this will very much depend on the student, but gener generally speaking, um, Flyers would be aiming at 9 to 10 year olds and key for schools from 11 onwards. But again, obviously, it's, it's very dependent on the student. Um, and the same for movers and starters, very dependent on the children, but very gen generally speaking, um, 
starters would begin maybe six or seven, eight um, movers, eight or nine. We've also had a question about how we can make education fun uh, in the age of new technologies and the internet. And it's certainly a very difficult one um, to answer in a short space of time. I think that um, we'll, young learners are so comfortable with new technology that they do find it, most, most of the time, they do find it motivating and enjoyable. They're often, let's be honest, uh, more expert at using it than we are. I think that the, um, the best way to, to start with this is to start with small activities um, and build up um, confidence in them. There are some excellent games available, um, such as Monkey Puzzle, which are really fun uh, because of the excellent graphics um, and they're very motivating for young learners. Thank you. A question on um, young learners' tests on computer, whether they will be available on Android um, tablets. Eventually they will be. At the moment they will be available um, just on selected tablets, um, but the idea is eventually for them to be rolled out on tablets. Okay, I think that's um, all of your questions for the moment. So thank you very much for attending the webinar and we'll see you at the next one, which is on the revised first, first for schools and advanced exams from 2015. Thank you, goodbye.